What's going on guys, Nandemo Guy. Recently, I went to a movie theater called the Alamo Draft House here in Denver, and they were replaying one of my favorite videos from my teenage years. At the time, it was about high school, I was really into computers, I had already built my own computer like in freshman year, not too long before this movie came out. So, needless to say, I was the perfect demographic for this movie. After watching the movie in the theater, I was hit with a wave of nostalgia, and decided that I was going to pick up a few items and reproduce some of the props from the movie. So I picked up some of the pages from the movie. Stick with me, I'll show you how we do it. Alright, I picked up the pages that were used in the movie. It is called the Motorola Advisor. Please note that there are two different versions. The real difference is on the correct version, these buttons, like where the paint is, they're indented and the paint is inset on the buttons. On the other one, they are just screen printed onto the buttons. And as you can notice, like right here, uh, the arrow itself has worn off. What I do like about the second version, if you notice, the Motorola logo is much stronger. So what I will be doing uh, is taking the buttons from the correct one and moving them over. So there you go, the two different versions. First thing we gotta do is take them apart. Let's get started. So this same pager is seen in the movie in four different finishes. One is the original finish and that's actually used by Freak. Uh, you can see it in one scene where it's on his backpack. There's of course the yellow color that everybody recognizes. This is serial killer's color and is the one uh, most prominently seen in the movie. There's also green which is Lord Nikon's color. You can see that when he's inside the subway train. And then there's sort of a reddish orange color which is Crash Override Zero Cool's color. All of these have a white undercoat, so we'll start with the white color and uh, go from there. All right, so the first thing we got to do is take this thing apart. Now, we don't really need any special tools, probably just a small flathead screwdriver. We're going to take off the battery cover, and then what we're wanting to get at is this little rectangle piece right here side closest to that and lift it up the whole thing does actually slide out of the way there we go so it slides out of the way a little bit and then it actually pops straight up just like that and really now it just opens up like a clamshell there we go these pop off and there we go The important thing is our plastic pieces. We have one more thing that we're gonna do, and that is to pop out this rubber button. It's real easy to come out. So now we have all our plastic pieces. I'm going to clean them up. So for cleaning, I simply recommend using some alcohol and a cotton swab. Juice up the cotton swab and just go over the whole thing. This will make sure it gets all the oils and, uh, and any crud off of the plastic pieces that may be on there um, and get it ready for paint. Let's do that with all the plastic pieces and we'll go to the next step. All right, we're gonna use an old painter's trick. We're gonna use just plain old Vaseline and a, a paintbrush and essentially paint Vaseline into any place where we do not want the paint to stick, such as the, the screen here and some of the stickers. So we're just gonna lay it on um, fairly thickly and uh, this will help the paint uh, come off of these areas when we're done so 
If you don't do this step, you will have an extremely difficult time getting paint off the screen and, you know, more likely you would not be able to get it off at all. So that's that one. We're also going to do this sticker as well as these sections here. Now the surface of the plastic is somewhat textured. So make sure that uh, you get the Vaseline worked in pretty well. And last but not least, where the pocket clip goes, we just want to grease up the entire uh, interior of that um, because we do not want to have a difficult time getting the pocket clip back in. That's essentially all that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go and uh, take it for paint now. Now for paint, we're going to be using a white primer that's actually made for plastic. Now we're going to go ahead and spray it with the yellow. All right, so it's fairly dry. Uh, what's interesting is in the drying process, you can see where the Vaseline was, the paint has kind of shrunk and it should probably just, yeah, see, you just like peel it off. All right, so I've got a 400 grit sandpaper um, and, and we're just gonna kind of go to work on this thing. Um, we're not gonna be pressing hard. Um, we just wanna weather some of the areas. And if you look, I mean, if you stop the movie where he gets paged, by acid burn, um, you can get a pretty good idea of where the major uh, where areas are. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of go in here, give it uh, the right touches in the right places, expose the white underneath, and in some areas uh, expose the black as well. Um, it's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, some of the some of these can be done with the magic eraser, which is a much less harsh abrasive. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think this is going well. All right, I think that's just about there. Now let's get ready to do the back of the screen. Off camera. I recreated the text pixel by pixel using the movie still as reference, resizing and test printing on paper until it was right. To make use of space, I multiplied it several times and even created a few customs. It also must be mirrored before printing. Online or at hobby stores, pick up some clear water slide decal paper. There's different kinds for inkjet and laser printers. With laser printers, just print and you're done. But for inkjet, we need to seal the decals before using. Using acrylic enamel, spray four to five thin coats to completely seal the decals. All right, so it looks like I got it pretty well covered, but there is only one way to find out. Soak it in the water, and if the ink runs, I didn't have it covered well enough. Really cool thing about this, obviously it's reversed so that when I apply it, it's going to be facing the right direction um, when looking at it through the piece. Let's go ahead and soak it and see what we get. Moment of truth. Yeah, there we go. Just don't rip. And that looks like that's just about right. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's upside down for you guys, I realize. Um, now all I'm gonna do is uh, try to get all the water out from behind it so it doesn't have any bubbles. Um, but then we're gonna paint the back with some, uh, some gold paint. All right, so what I did here was just tape it down. Because the surface was finished, um, I taped it down to a piece of cardboard tape around the outside because the last thing I want is for any paint 
to get underneath and uh, mess up the yellow that I've already sprayed. So we'll take this out now and spray it with gold paint. Some Rust-Oleum Metallic. Brilliant metal finish. And we are dry. Let's uh, peel this apart and take a look. The big reveal. <laughs> Not too shabby. Let's put it back together, see what it looks like. And here is the finished product. Um, I'm very pleased. Uh, as you can see, the, the weathering turned out pretty nice. Um, I don't have the, the thing on the back yet, but I'll just need to repaint this guy and put him on. But overall, came out very, very nice. Uh, the weathering looks good. Uh, it actually looks quite uh, faithful to the original. Um, one thing I did not do on camera was I used a little bit of white to retouch up the corners where I went through a little too much. Um, but uh, I mean that's that's pretty minimal. Um, so I'm very very happy with how this came out. Uh, all the internals are back in there so if I put a battery in it uh, I could effectively turn it on um, though I wouldn't be able to see the screen to do anything anymore. But I'm very very happy very very faithful creation. Now I did mention the other colors. Uh, I did do the green, the red, the yellow, and the black uh, with custom screens as well to note each of the actors involved. My hope is at some point that I can actually get these signed by the actors, uh, that would be really, really cool. And then just obviously keep these in my collection. So that is the results of my efforts. Nandemo guy. Oh, you guys are still here. That means one of two things. You're either a real hackers fan or you're a really good friend of mine. So, got a little extra bonus for you. Throughout this video, I've placed certain items from or about the movie Hackers. If you can find and name all of them to me in a message, I will be giving away one custom pager of your choice. Color, message, whatever else like that. Go ahead and take a look at the video again. See if you can find them all. Shoot me a message and uh, we'll see who wins. Not Nemo Guy.